it's not as good as the other one. It's, it's R was only 0.773, but um, if we do draw this little line right here, this is the best approximation we can get for the dots, um, is that line right there. We could draw other lines, but they wouldn't do as good of a job approximating the dots as this one does. So this is the best one we could possibly get. And those ones are going to just be multiple choice. Some of them it's going to be really obvious if you have like a, a line with a negative slope going through it, that it's not going to be that hard. You can probably use profit double negation. So speaking of slope, <laughs> that's the next thing we're going to talk about is interpretations of the slope and the y-intercept. And so you will have a question like this on the test um, where you have to kind of interpret what it means. So. Um, So um, this one, we're just doing this example right here. I was trying to figure out what word was supposed to go there, but it's not a word, it's a number. So this is for our drilling example. So rather than defining it, they're just kind of um, jumping in, putting the numbers in. Okay, so if you look at the slope, um, if you have the equation of a line, <clears throat> back to your algebra days, you've got y equals mx plus b, and so this slope right here, that's your m, with a French word on top, and then b, that's your y-intercept, so that's going to be this part right here. You've got those two, oops, those two numbers that you're going to be using when they ask you about slope and line. So our slope is the one that cuts in front of the x, that's the point zero one two. Us. Slope is going to be 0 0.012. That's the number that comes in front of your x. <clears throat> okay, so back to what slope means. Get rid of the stuff out of here. All right, so. Does anyone remember what slope represents? Yeah, it's the same thing as rise over run. So your slope is going to be your rise over your run. <clears throat> so usually when we look at slopes, we think of them as fractions and not like whole numbers. This one's a decimal. We're just going to write that decimal as a fraction just to make it a little bit easier for us. Um, so we'll have the rise over run. Um, the way I learned it was um, change in y over change in x. So if you're rising, then you're changing your y value if you're going up or down. If you're running, you're going left to right, then you're changing your x. So what we're going to do for this one is we're just going to put a 1 under it. So we'll have 0 0.012 as the numerator, and then we should put a 1 on the bottom. You're not going to have it come out to like a nice little three halves or anything like that most of the time. So um, I would just make your new, uh, denominator one and then just leave your uh, numerator as a decimal. Um, some people don't like that the decimal and fraction mix, but it's fine because it'll help you get the answer um, if you don't try to simplify it or something. Okay, so it says for each additional foot of depth, we start drilling. So here. X, remember that was um, our depth when drilling started. Okay. So if that increases by one, each additional foot, the time to drill, that's going to be up here. This is our time to drill. It's going to increase by just the point zero one two on average, not always. So if you increase your x by 1, your y is going to increase by 0 0.012. And that's what you'll need to do for the slope interpretation um, for those. This is 
slope. Then they've also got the y-intercept, this number right here. They rounded it to four decimal places. So um, the problem with the, so the slope always has an interpretation. So you can always say if x changes by one, your y is going to change by whatever your slope is. Um, for this one, um, the y-intercept it doesn't always have a practical interpretation. So um, the first thing we need to determine is is zero a reasonable value, and we'll do the next example. It won't be. And then do any observations near x equals zero exist in the data set close enough? You know, it doesn't have to be zero is right in the middle of everything. It just has to be, is it close enough to the other ones? Um, so if you look at the first example, um, if your x is zero, um, and remember here x is the depth when drilling started. Um, so for this one. x equals zero, then the depth when drilling started equals zero. So is that something that makes sense? Can we start drilling when our depth is zero? Would that be reasonable? You can start when your depth is zero. All that means is you're just right there at the surface. You haven't gone down at all. So if you just start right at the surface of the Earth, your depth is technically zero when you started. So that's that makes sense. You can actually do that. We'll do another example later that's a little more easy to see, um, kind of a non-example when that doesn't work. Um, so we'll say a value of zero is reasonable. For the drilling data, this indicates that drilling begins at the surface. So that's OK. And then here they say the smallest observation is 35 feet, which is reasonably close to zero. So if you look 35, you think it's really not all that close to zero. Um, but if you look at the other <coughs> options you have, it starts at 35, and the largest one you have is 190. Um, so if you look at how big this data set is, from 35 all the way up to 190, um, zero isn't too far away from 35. If you look at your graph, here's your dots. Zero is over here, so it's not too far away. Um, so that one would say, um, since it meets both of the criteria, zero, um, x being zero makes sense, and x equals zero is not too far away from the other data values we see, then we can go ahead and interpret the y-intercept. So they do that down here, but let's talk about what the y-intercept means. So um, when you're graphing um, a line, what does the y-intercept represent? the y-axis, then that means that your x value has to be what? Zero. So your y-intercept is basically asking you what happens when, y, when x equals zero. So if they ask, two. Then you have to interpret y-intercept. saying if x equals zero, then y equals b, whatever your y-intercept happens to be from your calculator. So in this case, that's why we have to make sure x equals zero makes sense. In this case, it does, so it's OK. So for this one, when we're interpreting the y-intercept, so if x equals zero, well, we already talked here. <coughs> If x equals zero, that means 